Hello, I'm Oliver Manuel. I have a PhD in nuclear chemistry. I postdoc in physics at UC Berkeley in space physics. Uh, I am an emeritus professor and a former uh, NASA principal investigator for the Apollo mission to the moon. Today I want to introduce a four-part video series on the scientific intricacies of Genesis. The videos summarize four experimental observations that were made since I started research in 1960 on the origin of the solar system. These four experimental measurements surprised me and when you see the data I suspect they'll surprise you. The findings were unwelcome in our rather dogmatic scientific community. These findings may also be unwelcome by members of any dogmatic religious community. However, my responsibility is to try to communicate what the measurements show us, and that's my intention. First surprising observation told us that every atom in you and in me and in the valleys and the sea were all ejected from our early sun. The second surprising set of observations told us that iron is the most abundant element in the sun, in the earth, and in ordinary meteorites. The third surprising observation showed us that our primary heat source is repulsion between neutrons in the core of the sun. The fourth surprising observation is that Earth's climate is always changing because of the constantly changing positions of the giant planets that jerk around the neutron star that's in the middle of the sun like a yo-yo on a string. So without further delay, let's look at the results of analysis on mineral separates from the Allende meteorite in 1975, data that revealed the very birth of the solar system. This video explains a mystery that has plagued science since 1975. Why, at the birth of the solar system, was there no helium with normal xenon? Why was all the helium with strange xenon, in which the heaviest isotope has twice the normal abundance? Measurements at the University of Chicago showed that all primordial helium was accompanied by strange xenon, as shown here from mineral separates of the Allende meteorite. Normal xenon, Xe1, came from the deep interior of a star that gave birth to the solar system. Fusion had consumed all light elements like helium from the interior region. Strange xenon, Xe2, came from the outer layer of the supernova that produced the solar system. Light elements like helium were abundant there. This video animation shows how rocky planets and ordinary meteorites started to form in the deep interior of supernova debris and then acquired trace levels of light elements like helium, tagged with strange xenon from the same outer layer of the supernova. In conclusion, the solar system was formed by the fragmentation of a star rather than by the condensation of an interstellar cloud. The sun reformed on the collapsed supernova core and is heated mostly by neutron repulsion, rather than by hydrogen fusion. This animation represents a 3D flight-through of supernova debris from Cassiopeia A that was prepared by NASA associates Delaney and Barry.